What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be all about altcoins. Now as Bitcoin absolutely skyrockets, we are starting to see some of those altcoins get some big moves and we were able to call some nasty altcoin pumps before they happened on my live stream at 5.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We were looking at Ethereum before it ripped to $31 to $3,200. We were looking at Dogecoin around 16 cents, looking for it to pump exactly up to 38 cents, which is where it's sitting right now. And even last night on my live stream we were looking for xrp to break an extremely important level of resistance because we knew if we were able to get above there we could potentially look for a pump and since then xrp has pumped about 15 percent and i know a lot of these moves are starting to make people feel some fomo and on top of the bitcoin pump as well as getting ethereum and some of these other altcoins to start getting big moves besides all the obvious stuff we really do have some really bullish signs on the chart for a potential incoming alt season or at least some kind of mini altcoin rally to continue here so i'm gonna go over all of that so you guys can try to find these moves before they happen just like we do on the live stream but today i want to talk about three altcoins that i'm looking at that could be setting up to be some of the next altcoins to get a rip i want to talk about exact key levels i'm looking at and then if certain levels are broken where are we looking at for those targets to the upside because there are some super saucy altcoin setups on the chart right now so without further ado guys get your dgen hats on and let's go ahead and jump on into the charts let's get into it now recently on the live stream guys we have been looking at total three as we were coming up to this very key level of resistance which is the POC of a major previous range. And we knew that once we started kind of hitting our head up here, we were going to be likely to break through. And once that was able to happen, we were going to see a big push up on the alts. And the nice thing about this, guys, now that we have broken out above this POC, we do have some room to run here into the value area high, which is sitting at about 903 billion. So there is still some room for this chart to move up. Now we do have some local levels of resistance here. So I don't want this video to be any kind of like, you know, panic buy right now. Everything's going to go to the moon in two seconds. Um, you know, there is likely to be some local turbulence, but the fact that we have held this value area low as support and have now gotten above this POC, guys, if you know anything about my analysis, you know the next major area we're going to anticipate visiting is going to be that value area high. And once we get that breakout, we could potentially see a lot of these other altcoins start to fly. So with all this in mind, on top of the fact that we do have the RTY or the Russell 2000 that has now broken out, this has typically been good, not only for crypto bull runs, but also alt season. The Russell 2000 is kind of like total three for the stock market. It just tracks those lower market cap stocks, kind of like Total 3, excluding all the big boys. And the fact that we have gotten this to break out very nicely has, in the past, been a very, very good sign for crypto, and again, specifically the altcoins. Now, like I said, on the live stream, we have been looking at some very, very specific things on these altcoins, not only seeing that bullish setup on Total 3, but also seeing that Ethereum was simply sitting in a lower consolidation zone here, where we knew if we broke out of this level and specifically broke above the level of 2830, where we had a 786 Fibonacci retracement, there was not going to be much in the way to stop Ethereum from pumping up to $31 to $3,200. And you guys can see here, we are sitting at about $3,300. So we did wind up getting that to play out perfectly. And again, we were looking at this as Ethereum was wiggling around here. And this has to do with the way that I trade, guys, and the strategies that I use. And it really comes down to the market constantly seeking fair value. And inside of these ranges, guys, is what we can look at as a fair value for the asset. And when you wind up getting a break out of these ranges, this is what we've been going over. Once Ethereum was able to break out of this range, we knew that it was very likely to seek out the previous area of fair value because the market is either going to be in balance or we are going to enter imbalance. And when you enter imbalance, price has only a few options of what it can do. It could either create new balance, shout out to the sneakers. You could either create new balance in some random part of the chart or more likely than not, price is going to seek out a previous area of fair value where price has found balance before. And you guys can see here, when you're looking at Ethereum here, you come into bar replay mode and you see price is just wiggling around in one of these volume profiles like this. You know, once you wind up getting imbalance out of this range, you are likely going to seek out this value area low. And this is what I like to call the doorway to higher prices, because once we get above this, this is where we're going to be anticipating to fill this range in whole, understanding we're going to have local levels of resistance to give us turbulence. But at that point, you're really looking for price to fill that range, assuming you can get above the POC of the range. And what do we see happen here on Ethereum? We got that imbalance and very, very simply, we expected it to come into this previous area of balance. And here we are sitting in that range. And this is not the only thing we've been looking at we were talking about things like dogecoin at 16 cents using the same exact theory guys 
knocking on that doorway to higher prices. We even label this on the live stream. It's been labeled the doorway to higher prices forever. And we knew that if we broke above 16 cents, we were very likely to pump not only to 26 cents, but eventually 38 cents. And we've seen Dogecoin get that entire move through that entire range, which is again, what I'm gonna be expecting on Ethereum coming up here pretty soon. Even things like Cardano, seeing this key level of resistance at about 48 cents, understanding that once we break above that level, it is gonna be very likely to see Cardano shoot up into its next major level of resistance, which we had marked out here with the value area high, sitting at about 65 cents. And where did Cardano just locally top out at? Right at that key level. Now, this is not magic, guys. This is just based off the analysis that we do on the charts. And I know a lot of these altcoins are already cranking, but again, I wanna show you guys some of the undervalued altcoins that I'm looking at that are sitting in the same exact situation that Ethereum was sitting here back in the beginning of November before the big breakout into that previous area of balance. Like Dogecoin, when it was hovering around 16 cents or even down here, at about nine cents before it cracked that doorway to higher prices and got the big move up. And even on Dogecoin, guys, what did we have happen here? Fair value down here, you imbalance out of the fair value and naturally price is going to seek out that previous area of balance. And where is Dogecoin sitting? Right inside of that area of balance. And it's not just a lucky guess here, guys. If you zoom into the lower time frames, you can see every single one of these levels was perfectly respected. This has been drawn like this on my chart for months, even since back when Dogecoin approached these levels back here in March. March. We were still looking at this exact same level and we keep it on the chart because we know it's absolutely key to call for those bigger moves up. We have the value area low here. Dogecoin gets above beautifully, flips that level to support, and now you're off to the races to the POC. You flip that POC to support, and that is where you're looking for the value area high, and that is where we're getting the turbulence right now. So this stuff absolutely works, guys. The volume profiles will change your life, and we make calls like this all the time on the live stream. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and you turn on notifications so you don't miss any of these moves before they actually happen. Everybody wants to buy Dogecoin up here. Nobody wants to buy it when you're sitting down here before the pump. And we've been making these calls absolutely beautifully. So now that you guys get an understanding of kind of what I'm going to be looking at here. Let's take a look at that first undervalued altcoin. And in my opinion, that is going to be Dot, guys. Polkadot has been getting absolutely crushed. And not only is Polkadot down here below its major, major value area from the bull market of 2021. Now, again, I, I don't want this to make it sound like Polkadot is 100% guaranteed to moon here. This is not financial advice. I'm just showing you guys what I'm seeing on the charts. Some altcoins don't make new all-time highs. Sometimes they don't make them to their previous highs, but this definitely looks like a bullish chart in my opinion. And as you can see, DOT has been in its lower accumulation range, and we even lost this range a little bit, guys. And shout out to the premium Discord, guys, because in there, we were actually looking at Polkadot approaching these lows into this key Fibonacci level. But not only that, we were able to snipe a potential short squeeze building at about 43 cents before we actually got that explosion to the upside. And then at that point, we actually knew once we broke above this, again, doorway to higher prices. If we can hold this level as support, this is very likely going to be the doorway up to the POC at about $4.50, flip that to support. That's where we're looking for the entire fill of this range at $7.72. Now, the beautiful thing about Polkadot here is this is actually in a little bit of a different situation than Dogecoin because Dogecoin has already gotten a rip out of its major value area, came back down, retested the POC, and only then did it get a fill of that upper macro volume profile. So Polkadot is extremely undervalued here, in my opinion, sitting down at the bottom of this range, especially because when you look at the CVD, you can see that people were shorting the heck out of this thing at the lows, absolutely degen shorting, expecting it to go to zero, but the spot buys were coming in. People were buying and holding Polkadot, causing this squeeze back into the range, and as long as we can hold above this value area low, guys, I will be looking to pick up some more Polkadot in anticipation of potentially coming up to higher prices, targeting about $7.92, and then eventually when we get above this level, you still have a ton of room to run into that macro value area low. So we're looking at Dogecoin here. Polkadot is still kind of hovering down here before even getting the full fill of its local range before breaking out into its upper range. So I do think there's a lot of room here for Polkadot to go. And those are going to be the key levels I'm looking at. Value area low to hold is 492. POC at 635. That would be a key target to the upside. And then that value area high at about 792 would be the next local target to the upside. Once we start breaking out of there and we start to get imbalance, 
out of this range, we can then target this macro value area low at about 14 cents. Start flipping that. This is where things can get very exciting. Now, we do have, obviously, local levels of resistance up here. There's a pretty big level of resistance here at about $17 for polka dot with a POC, naked points of controls. But for the most part, guys, just thinking about the auction market theory, you break out of here, you are likely to come to that value area low and then get that full fill of the range. And if you guys are questioning the power of these doorways to higher prices or these value area lows, we only have to look as far as XRP because yesterday on my live stream saying if we're able to crack that 62 cent level, this is where we're going to start to see XRP get an opportunity to absolutely rip to the upside, targeting the POC at 83 cents. And again, guys, this was called last night on my live stream at about 5.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So XRP was sitting right here, knocking on that door of the value area low, looking to break out. And we knew once we cracked that, we were likely to see a quick move to the upside. And since last night's live stream, that is about a 22% pump from last night. Absolutely insane. The reliability of this TA, guys. The volume profiles will absolutely change your life if you actually know where to pull your ranges and you know what you're looking at on the chart. And I know I even feel the pain, guys. Sometimes when something gets crushed this hard, it is a little bit hard to like have faith in it. But as far as the charts go, not only did we get the short squeeze with the deviation below the profile, we also had two-day bullish divergences forming here with lower lows on our price action, higher lows on our momentum waves. And the last time we saw this happen, guys, was again on a deviation below that value area low with lower lows on our price action, higher lows on our momentum waves, money flow comes up, and that wound up resulting in an absolute rip of 230% before coming back down into the range. So this could be a very good opportunity. And in my opinion, I am picking up some extra polka dot as well as looking for long positions to see if we can catch this next big rip to the upside. And that's not even mentioning, guys, that polka dot revisited its bear market lows. And if this thing decides to rip and even go for a golden pocket retracement, we are looking at some pretty, pretty big moves for polka dot. First move I would be looking at being a little bit conservative, about 102% move from when we alerted the premium discord, but about a 59, almost 60% move from where we're at right now. Shout out to the premium discord, literally got that call in there the, the day before this push to the upside. But in a much bigger move, guys, when we really start to see alt season pop off, you know, polka dot could potentially have a gain of about 530% from the current price of today's recording, which is November 12th at about 403 p.m. So massive, massive opportunity here. And when things like Dogecoin have already ripped into this volume profile and have already gotten to the value area high, why would we be looking to buy the top here when there are other altcoins that are still sitting at these bear market lows? Just some food for sauce, uh, food for thought. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump on into our next altcoin, guys. And that is going to be Celestia. Now, Tia is in a very, very similar situation, guys. Now, obviously, Tia does not have 2021 highs to look at, but we do have these levels up here that we can look at. And where is Tia, guys? It is still from the high, still down about 75%. And we've been looking at this on the live stream ever since we were sitting below this range, saying once we get above this value area low and flip it to support, this is where we could potentially see the fill of this range and potentially even the breakout to much higher prices, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But if we pull up Market Cipher B here, guys, there's some other bullish signs here on Tia, assuming that things continue to pump and Bitcoin doesn't absolutely dump. Obviously, if Bitcoin comes down, this is going to invalidate a lot of this analysis. That's important to realize. But we do have a green dot here on the weekly on market cipher with a 10 hour money flow crossover into the green potentially looking to happen here soon guys if this 10 hour money flow crossover into the green does wind up occurring with that weekly green dot printing that could be a very bullish sign for tia putting my sights up here on that value area high at about 644 and even if we deviate below guys we do still have some lower levels here that if we hold above could still be a decent dip buy for celestia even if we come down into this golden pocket 786 i will still be looking at that as an undervalued asset to ride back up to the value area high. And the fun part about this is once you get back up to that value area high, if you start to get imbalanced to the upside, simply meaning that the buyers are outweighing the sellers, we can see that impulse just like on Ethereum, just like on Dogecoin, we could see that impulse to the upside. So just very simply put, guys, we have balance down here. If we impulse out, you have to be aware of the Fibonacci retracements. But for the most part, we're going to be targeting this local value area low at 888. If we flip this purple box, we can look up towards about 1105. And then if we keep going there, guys, and we see this play out just like Ethereum, just like Dogecoin, just like Shiba Inu, if we get that bigger move up and we can cross the 
biggest level, in my opinion, would be about $12.30. This is likely to give you some turbulence, but for the most part, guys, if we're just looking at this in the macro, we get out of here and start impulsing. We are looking to flip this POC slash value area low between about 1230 and about 1170. If we can stay above here, that's where you can see a huge move up through the rest of this range into the weekly naked point of control sitting at about 1762. And once that breaks out, we are in price discovery and who knows how high we can go. I'm not going to make any price predictions in this video, but they will be coming very soon, guys. I'm going to give you sound, realistic price targets on some of these altcoins based off actual information, not just my random guess on how bullish I think it's going to be, but I give you actual information, actual realistic targets, so you're not holding for unrealistic prices and then holding your back all the way back to the downside. I want the mafia to actually make money, and I'm going to do my best to help you guys do that. And you do not want to miss these moves, but the charts change all the time, guys, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, tune into the live stream so you keep up to date with everything, because if things start looking bearish, I will be the first person to let you know. But right now, these charts are looking pretty undervalued. Now, for the third setup I want to look at here, guys, I want to take a look at Beam. As you can see, Beam is in a very similar situation where we simply have, even if you don't know the TA, guys, you can just see we're in a lower range here. We have the upper area of consolidation or upper value area up here. Once we impulse out of this range, again, just like Ethereum, right? This is not magic. When you have those lower ranges and the impulse, you will more than likely seek out that previous area of value just to hammer home that this is not just random predictions. This is actually based off the rotation of value in the market. And you can simply see here, we have a lower range and an upper range. So even Beam is starting to get the crack to the upside here. However, it is still not gotten the big move like some of these other coins, right? We have that lower accumulation range. Sure, this is not as good of a situation as Polkadot or Tia, in my opinion, because, you know, Polkadot and Tia are kind of closer than down here. But, you know, this is still pre-breakout. If we start impulsing out of here, guys, we could potentially wind up seeing some higher prices on Beam, looking at the value area low golden pocket as the next major target, sitting between about 0 0.0249 and 0 0.02817 seven right and then once we get above that level we can look up towards the high of this range getting into the three cent zone and again who knows once this breaks out and starts making all-time highs there's no telling how high this can go but again beam is pre-breakout these are the coins that i am accumulating right it's not just the chart i do like some of these projects as well although i am mostly focused on charts if it's a bullish chart and i think it's going to go up i'm going to take advantage of that regardless of what the news is and i do just want to bring up ondo guys in a very similar situation shout out to the premium discord i actually did call this one earlier at about 74 cents in the premium discord looking for that breakout of the range into that macro value area low slash 786 retracement and we pull up that chart guys where are we sitting very simply put, we got that breakout. And where do we get the rejection from? Right from that 786 retracement, right? We got that calculated pump to the upside into the value area low 786. And now we're getting a little bit of turbulence. But again, even though we've already broken out of the range here, I will say this is still in a better situation, in my opinion, than Dogecoin. Because Dogecoin, again, got the breakout, retested the range, and is already sitting up here structurally. So, you know, Ondo still, you know, although this was a 78% pump to the value area high, on the call that the premium Discord got, you're still about a 50% move up to that value area high from the current price. Now, I'm not saying these are all beautiful entries right where they're sitting right now. Things like Tia, Dot, those are pretty low in my opinion. But, you know, something that's already gotten a big rip like this, I would probably be more interested in waiting for a little bit of a correction into some key Fibonacci retracement levels. So if Ondo were able to get a move back down to this value area high, slash 786 retracement, right down here, this confluence between, I would call it 80 cents down to 76 cents. Um, you know, if we do come back down there and retest this, I would be willing to look for some long positions or even a, a buy the dip situation um, to, uh, you know, potentially prepare to get back into this upper range and fill the rest of that profile up to the value area high at $1.32. And then once we rip out of there, who knows how high this thing can go. But I just want to put this all into perspective for you guys because there's a lot of altcoins that look like this. And I wanted to make this quick update to show you guys not only the calls we've been making on the live stream playing out literally to the exact volume profile levels we've been looking at, but just to show you guys that this TA actually works. And, you know, everybody wants to chase the pumpers, but no one wants to pay attention to the coins that that are consolidating and undervalued below their major ranges. So I'm here to tell you, don't buy the top. Look for the things that have not ripped yet. That is where the money is to be made, in my own personal opinion. So get out there, hit the charts, guys. Go find your favorite altcoin. Your favorite altcoin might be in this exact same setup. But again, this is never financial advice. I'm just bringing you information I see on the charts. But you bet your bottom dollar, I am picking up some of these altcoins at the lows. If they dip a little more, I might even buy a little bit more lower. But you don't want to be late to this party that is likely going to start popping off. Get exposed to crypto before the 
real party starts because if you show up late to the party, the cops are going to show up five minutes later and shut it down. So take it from your boy, Frankie Candles. Hit those charts. Educate yourself here. It is not too late to get into crypto. This could be the biggest financial opportunity that you ever see in your lifetime. So don't miss out. If you missed last cycle, you felt that pain back then. Now don't feel it again. And with all that being said, guys, that's all the time I got for this video. This is not financial advice, guys. I'm not saying these coins are going to go up immediately, although they can. I don't want anyone to FOMO. I'm just showing you guys what I'm doing. And you have to make your own financial decisions. But hopefully this educates you guys and gives you a little bit more insight into what I'm looking at on the chart. And hopefully we can keep this crystal ball rolling and we can keep calling these moves for the Candle Mafia and keep cashing out for the rest of this bull market. And that's all the time I got for today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Frankie Candles Here out. We go. At the top of the glass on a roll. And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor. Ayy, on the road, here we go, here we go. Yeah, we winning by a landslide.